Here we have an old Vox guitar amplifier. I can't find a model number on this unit. You would expect some kind of label here. It does look like a modern Pathfinder, but this is way older than that. After doing some research, I found that it's probably a Vox Escort B2. The Escort B2 was introduced in 1974 and designed to be a small, portable, battery-powered amplifier. It doesn't seem to turn on, so I'm guessing there's no battery in it right now. Let's have a look inside. So this is where the battery is supposed to go. And it's also been fitted with a connector for an external power supply. Now this backplate is definitely not the original. There's supposed to be two different backplates and they're supposed to be screwed in place. Now these large battery terminals is not something you see in modern equipment. It's intended for PP9 types of batteries, which is 9 volt batteries that's a lot larger than modern ones. And they seem to be connected in series, so we should be able to replace it with an 18 volt power supply. It seems to draw quite a lot of current. Let's take a look at the circuit board and see if we can see any signs of burned components. So there are no obvious signs of burnt component on this PCB, but there is one component that stands out a bit. This transistor. Let's have a closer look at that. It seems that this transistor has been replaced and it's not very nicely done. It looks like they've just cut the legs of the old one and soldered a new one onto the old one's legs. And I guess they did that to avoid removing this PCB, which would have taken a few minutes more. And it does actually look like the legs of this transistor are touching each other. So let's start by just bending the transistor legs away from each other and see if that solves the problem. One of the legs came loose, we'll have to resolder that. There we go. It still looks terrible, but at least the legs are not touching anymore. Let's try to turn it on again. So it's still pulling quite a lot of current. So when measuring on the power supply input, we get a resistive value of 18.5 ohms, which is a lot less than it should be. So I think we'll detach the PCB so we get a better view of what component it might be to cause this. Someone has been messing around quite a lot on this PCB and this part of the heatsink isn't even grounded. It's supposed to be grounded to dissipate the heat to the ground plane. Things like this could cause stuff to overheat. Here we have the schematic for this Vox Escort. It's quite a simple design. We have two audio inputs, normal and brilliant, and depending on which one you choose you get a slightly different sound. What differs is that the brilliant input has this filter instead of just a resistor. And this filter lets a bit more of the high frequencies through. So there will be a bit more treble using this input, which I guess they call brilliance. And then the signal goes to this bipolar transistor, which I guess works as a preamplifier. And then we have the tone adjustment circuit and the volume control, which is just a simple voltage divider. So when you turn this all the way down, you essentially short the signal to ground. And then the signal goes to the TBA810S which is an integrated power amplifier. So this is the circuit that is delivering power to the speaker. So this unit is powered using two 9 volt batteries and there is also a version that has a built-in power supply, which this one does not have. So what we're seeing is that the current draw is way too high and when measuring the resistance between this power rail and ground we get a very low value, which indicates that some component connected to the power rail is faulty. So I've detached and measured the resistance of all of these components except this one, and they all seem to be fine. So I'm guessing that the TBA810S is the one that is faulty. So let's remove it and measure it out of circuit. Now something that's probably good to know is that desoldering a heatsink like this 
requires a lot of power. Trying to do it with a cheap hobby soldering iron like this one will be very very hard. So here we have the presumably broken power amplifier IC and here we have a new one. So let's do some comparative measurements. So on the old one we have 22 ohms between power rail and ground. And the new one shows an open circuit between power rail and ground, which is how it's probably supposed to be. It's a pretty interesting IC design with these tabs that's supposed to dissipate the heat. So these are supposed to be soldered to the ground plane and the ground plane will then act as a heat sink. So the larger the ground plane, the better the heat dissipation. And this can also be combined with a heat sink to dissipate heat even better. So now the taps of the IC and the heat sink will both be soldered to the ground plane. Okay, let's test it before we put it back together. So now we have a much more reasonable current draw. About 30 milliamps. Let's make sure we get some sound from the input. We do. Nice. There's some misconnection in the volume potentiometer and it does feel kind of worn out. It's probably best to replace it. Okay, let's remove the old one. So it's a 100 kilo ohm logarithmic resistor. So I'm going to replace it with this 100 kilo ohm potentiometer. It has the taper code A, which usually means that it's a logarithmic potentiometer. Now there are some regional differences regarding this taper code, which is unfortunate, but I'm pretty sure this is a logarithmic potentiometer. Let's get rid of these legs. Alright, let's test it again. <laughs> 